Michael, in trying to understand the underlying principles of evolutionary biology, one of the uh, powerful ideas that has come up, I want to see where it, where it, how it works, is punctuated equilibrium that Gould and Eldridge uh, put together. Uh, what, what, what is the, the uh, foundational importance of it? Well, punctuated equilibrium is an idea that Gould and Eldridge introduced at the beginning of the 18, of the 1970s. <clears throat> and the idea was that if you look at the fossil record, you do not see just a smooth thing like that. You see, well, jumps like that. And the question is why? Now, what they were trying to do, I think their motivation was to make paleontology more important than people thought it was. It wasn't just some sort of second rate thing that second rate people do. Fundamental part of evolutionary biology. Join the high table was the metaphor that was used. And, but what they did was argue that Darwinian principles can support this, that there's something called the founder principle, Ernst Meyer's idea, that populations have variation. If a group gets taken away, say blown out to an island, they're going to be different from the overall group at home. And so they're going to have to evolve pretty quickly to get used to each other like that. So what you're going to get is not physical jumps, but over a very short time, which you wouldn't get recorded in the fossil record, a change from form A to form B, mm. but all very authentically Darwinian. Mm. By the end of the decade, by the time we come to about uh, eight, uh, 1980, 1979, 1980, of course, Gould had become involved in the fight against sociobiology and Wilson, and he saw part of this as going against Darwinism as such, because he thought that sociobiology was a direct effect of Darwinism, so go after Darwinism. Oh. So punctuated equilibrium then evolved, if you like, <laughs> in a jump or otherwise, <laughs> to the, the famous paper that he and Lewinter wrote, The Spandrels of San Marco, where they argued that adaptation was way overdone, that what, as it were, forces evolution are constraints where you don't have adaptive changes, but constraint, which of course can happen pretty rapidly. So you get punctuation equilibrium, but early on it was Darwinian promoting the importance of paleontology. Mm. Later on, it was not non-Darwinian promoting the importance of getting away from sociobiology. Wow, but that was the motivation, uh, uh, the political motivation. But but the but the the theory was to. Uh, to degrade Darwinism in some right. way. Right, or down, mean, let's downplay, say downplay. downplay. That's, that's fair. Uh, and by putting constraints on the record uh, as opposed to uh, random mutation and then selection from that. That's a. I think that's true. And of course, philosophers loved it yeah. because it was a philosophical yeah. problem. Yeah, really but my it. suspicion, my feeling is that by and large, evolutionary biologists said, hmm, gold again, he's just promoting his own ego, let's move on. <laughs> Uh, what's the, the the view now from uh, you know almost uh, forty plus I'd be years very later? Surprised to find that punctuated equilibrium is a major factor in courses on paleontology mm -hmm. today. Uh, it, it's one of those things that might get discussed at the beginning of the class, the first class. But my suspicion is after that, it's Darwinism all the way. 